Invincible! It's been running since January of 2003. It's one of the most successful creator-owned comics out there. I mean, 13 years with basically the same creative team. It was created by Robert Kirkman and artist Corey Walker. Ryan Otley stepped in by issue 7, but Corey still comes back for the occasional backup or fill-in issue. What a team, what an accomplishment, and the reason we're going to cover it today is because Robert Kirkman recently announced that at issue 144, Invincible will be ending. Uh, it's in the 130s now, so it's got about a year until it ends. So I think it's a good time to look back at this amazing comic. Uh, the impressive thing about Invincible is that Robert Kirkman intentionally tries to subvert the tropes that you'd see in normal superhero comics. That said, it's got its own tropes because every writer, every creative team has its tropes that it, that it comes back and, and uh, repeats. So, first, let's take a look at some of the tropes you could reasonably expect to see in an Invincible comic book. Gory violence. Monologues. Invincible and a family member screaming at one another. Supporting characters being killed off. Crossovers with other comics by the author. Invasions from alien or interdimensional armies. Characters dealing with serious issues like alcoholism, rape, cancer, and sometimes those issues just fade away. Parodies of popular superheroes or science fiction. Meta-commentary on comic books. Invincible quitting a tough situation. Old-fashioned attitudes on women's roles being expressed by a character. Double panel splash pages. Splash page cliffhangers. Detailed and unique aliens or robots. Funny jokes. I need to do a type of disclaimer on this particular comic tropes. Uh, I have a tiny bit of involvement with Invincible. Basically, ever since Robert Kirkman started Battle Pope, uh, I've been proofreading his comics. And so, I don't, I'm not an editor, I'm not a writer or anything like that, but I'm close to the situation. So, I'm a little biased, you know, I'm not going to be too tough on any of these books. I really like them. Um, but also, that means that I get sent copies of all the comics uh, every week. Um, I get packages like this, and normally I don't even open them. <laughs> I just sort of stack them up for later. The comics come in here bagged and boarded, uh, straight from the printer. Um, so, whatever issue of Invincible I pull out of one of these, uh, that's the one we're going to review. Walking Dead. Ah, Manifest Destiny. Fantastic comic. Strongly recommended, but not invincible. I know we'll come across one eventually. Oh, nope. Also, Walking Dead. <laughs> Walking Dead. Sorry, as you can see, these back up. I hope that... Ah! Here we go. Okay, first, uh... What's this? Horizon. I don't remember that one. Sorry. Issue 120 of Invincible. Whoa! Wow, Invincible, you're here to read this issue with me? I, oh, yeah, I love reading comics about myself. Well, maybe you should first explain to the audience at home who you are. Oh, yep, I should. My name is Invincible, and I, my real name is Mark, and my dad was an alien, so I got his powers. I can fly, and I'm really strong. You know elephants? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know elephants. What about them? What about elephants? I can lift a bunch of them. I'm really strong. It's no problem. It's easy. Okay, uh, cool. Well, let's start reading the issue. Alright, so, the issue starts with a splash page featuring the character Battle Beast dying. At this point in the comic, he's been fighting uh, Thrag, the evil Viltrumite alien, for several issues in one-on-one -on -one combat. You know who Battle Beast was based on? Who, who's that? Worf from Star Trek! You ever see Deep Space Nine? Sure, I love that show. Yeah, it got really good when Worf joined the show. Uh, right. Okay, well, I think this qualifies as our first trope, gory violence. 
I don't think it's so bad. You don't? There's blood everywhere. Well, one time I saw an evil version of me from another dimension get his eye popped out. Oh. Oh, okay. Hey, it looks like the next page is also a trope as well. A double page spread. Oh, wee! That Ryan Otley sure draws a good picture! Yeah, yeah, and Kirkman gives him plenty of double page spreads to draw. Well, hey, what, what you drinking? This? Just a beer? Can I have some? Uh, sure. I'm taking a rest. Put it up to my mouth. That's enough for you. So, uh, Battle Beast is dead. That's another trope because a supporting character is dead. Ooh, that's a lot of tropes. Yeah? Yeah, it's a good number so far. The fight was being monitored by two aliens, Space Racer and Thresha. They work for the galactic government, and they're escaping Thrag's forces to report on what happened. Cut to a while later, when Invincible and his younger half-brother Oliver are uh, at the scene of the battle, they're, they're surveying it, and this is actually where Oliver was born. So... When Viltramites mate with aliens, their DNA takes over. Oliver used to be purple. He sure did, pal. So at this point in time, Invincible's former superhero friend, Robot, has taken over Earth. And uh, he's killed off any superheroes that disagree with his methods, uh, Invincible didn't agree with his methods, but instead of confronting him or leading a rebellion, he just took off with his wife and kid. I, I wasn't quitting. I'm brave. Well, you certainly didn't address the problem. Uh, maybe I will later. You ever think of that? Fair enough. Moving on. Invincible and Oliver travel back to the capital planet on a starship that's a pretty great parody of Star Trek. Uh, along the way, they recover Space Racer and Thresha. So, that's another trope, a parody of science fiction. Uh, Robert Kirkman loves Star Trek. What's a Star Trek? Stars can't trek! There's no backpacks big enough to fit them! Good one. Invincible gets home to his wife, Eve, and they decide to be intimate. Now, this is sort of a big deal because Invincible was recently raped by one of the Viltramites. Uh, you'd think he might tell his father, who's the leader of the Viltramites, but he didn't want to talk about it. You know what, uh, l let's keep reading. For the next several pages, Invincible plays with his infant daughter. There's even a double page splash. Uh, it also has a page where he talks to her for a whole page, and I think that's a pretty good example of a monologue. Normally those are done by supervillains, but in this he talks about how much he loves his daughter. I sure do love her. I promised her I'd never leave her or take any risks. That's really sweet. Next issue, I went on a mission that ended up sucking me out of the time stream for five years. That's horrible. It's a living. Now Invincible and his wife take their baby daughter and they explore their new home, which is an alien world. Uh, my favorite part in this is a scene which shows how alien it is. A girl seems to be crying about her cat stuck in a tree, but when Invincible brings it to her, she eats it. Uh, that's a good joke, and Invincible always has one or two of these. That's a trope. Uh, Kirkman is a funny guy. His first comic was Battle Pope, a humor book, and I think it's really funny. A Pope battling? <laughs> that is funny! <laughs> well, there's more to it than that, but yeah, it's a good book. Finally, we cut to a space fleet where the rogue Viltramite Thrag has taken aliens and turned them into a breeding force. Because of their accelerated aging, he plans to create a new Viltramite army for himself. And it ends with a splash page cliffhanger with Thrag wearing Battle Beast as a cape. Oh, oh, a cliffhanger splash page is a trope!
Yup, that's right, buddy. So that's seven. And you know what? Uh, Ryan Audley did really detailed aliens and robots in this issue. I mean, they're fantastic. Space Racer, Thresha, that alien girl on the planet. So that's another that's, one. Uh, that's eight tropes. Eight is a good number. Yeah, and they're mostly positive tropes, or at least tropes that Robert Kirkman himself created. Uh, this book didn't really rely on general tropes, and it frequently subverted them. My bladder is full. I gotta go pee! Okay. Thanks for visiting. So that's a look at Invincible. I think it's a really fun superhero comic. And a large part of that is because it tries to subvert the tropes of traditional superheroes that you'd get from Marvel or DC. Uh, you'd run into a situation where it looks like a reboot, but no, it's just a type of a time travel story. Or it would look like a legacy character would be taking over the mantle of Invincible, but no, Invincible just gave a different superhero permission to wear his costume. Uh, little things like that. Uh, it usually had some really good jokes. It had big plots. I think that's where it excels. Sometimes the dialogue, not the most exciting or creative. That's my one, maybe, criticism. But the plots are very exciting and epic. Um, I just, it's kind of sad to see it end after, it'll probably be 14 years around the time that it ends. That's a really good run for one writer basically the same creative team the whole time. It's impressive. It's quite an accomplishment. I recommend Invincible. Be curious to see in the comments whether you read it, what you think of this episode. Anyway, until next time, keep reading comics. I edited this. Chris isn't real. I am. What a twist.